same thing for the bottom one where the first outcome was a G. So this method called tree diagram generates every possible outcome associated with having three children. Okay, you okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I, I, okay, a very good question. I like tea. Yes. Eddie, you're listening. Exactly. Why do you think I'm so dramatic up here? You guys know, in my real life, Eddie, am I like this? Outside of the class? Dramatic? The answer is no, Eddie. <laughs> it's to wake you up, get you to ask questions, I think, and whatever. OK. Very good question. I like that question. You guys know why I like it? The answer to the question is yes, sort of. You could answer it if you had six children, or even 10 children, or even 20 children, right? You could generate a tree diagram to determine the total possible gender sequences, this is what it's called, for the sample space, OK? Yes, you can do it that way. However, it's now becoming uh, something that becomes really tedious. And it will be done, but stay tuned. The next chapter, we're going to start to answer probability questions when you have 6, 8, 10, 12, 20 children. You can have 100 children. We're not going to use tools to generate sample space in the way we're doing now with 3 children. That's going to be when we cover the binomial probability distribution. Good question. That's what I use when I'm sort of motivated to ask this is a binomial. I'll ask them a question like that. Okay, hey, generate a tree diagram for your house children now. Oh, no, make it 10. And how do you think the class me? Oh my God, you want to do this tree diagram? And I torture them for a little while. I say, go ahead, start it. They start it, and what happens? They go, oh my God, this is. Why do I do that? When I introduce a binomial, now you get their attention, and they're doing what they need to do. They're paying attention because they don't want to do the what? Tree diagram. But for now, we're not there yet. You guys have to do the what? This tree diagram. Yes, good question. Anybody have any other questions? You sure? OK. Positive? All right, let's talk about this last one, this mortality table. Um, to answer these questions, again, using that definition, what do you guys need to know? Remember this? What information do you need to know here for your definition of probability? The number of outcomes associated with the event and, and what else do you need to know? Oh. Am I covering it up? Sorry. What else do you need to know? Hmm. Number of outcomes in your sample space. How do you find that information if you're given a chart like this? I read the chart. You guys want to know what this chart means, what it says? It means that 28 men died of what? Cancer. 62 who? Men died of heart disease. 12 died of something other, stroke, whatever. Accident, you name it. What about women? 49 died of cancer. 21 died of heart disease. And 18 died of something what? Other. Can you tell me how many men are represented in this table? How many? How many men are in this table? Oh, it's 28 plus 62 plus 12. Is that right? How many men, how, how many are there? Uh, 20 and 62, what's that? 90? OK, 102 men are in this table. Is that true? How many women are here? 49, 21 is what? 70, 70 plus 18 is what? 88. So how many people are in this table? How many? How did you get that? You, what you did was you go, oh, OK. If there's 102 men and 88 women, then they must be 190 what? People. That's the total in the sample. Notice this. How many people died of cancer? How many? 77. How did you get that? OK. How many people died of heart disease? 80 what? And how many people died of something other than those two? 
You guys notice that if you take the 77, 83, and the 30, the number who died of cancer, the number who died of heart disease, and the number who died of something other than cancer and heart disease, that also is what? 190. See what I'm saying? That's the information that you're going to possibly need to answer these questions. Because probability is really about counting. It's counting the total number of outcomes for an event. And looking at how it relates to the total number of possible outcomes. It's that ratio, that fraction. So let's see, the first question. What's the likelihood that the person was a what? Man. What does that mean? How many men are in this table? 102. How many people are in the table? 190. You guys okay with that? What's the likelihood that you select a 1? What is it? A 8 over 190 as well. Of course, you reduce these fractions or you approximate this to a decimal. What about question three? What does it mean to die of cancer? Did they, is there any reference from question three to the sex? No. So you could be either a male or a what? Or a female. So how many people died of cancer? 70, so it's 77 now over what? 190. And I have to go through so much of these markers, it's not fun. Does anybody have any questions on the first three? I'm just curious, how many people have asked the first three already correctly? Oh, we should just go home. I don't know why we bothered showing it today. <laughs> is the table simpler? Well, this is the irony. The irony is this is a good point. Triola and your book, and even Math Excel, they ask questions that are sort of in this nature. In a sense, you're right. It is easier because they give you all the, they did the counting for you for the most part. And this is where some people look at this and go, oh my God, this is hard. I, I can't do it. And it could be that they're used to looking at this, but this is nuts and bolts behind the whole concept of counting. So traditionally, you show people this stuff because there's no guarantee you're going to have a table already, you know, made for you. You have to organize a table. You've got to gather data. But these, you know, examples and settings are really good tools to look at some of the concepts, some of the definitions, some of which I haven't given to you. So you have both going on. You have, the, and you have this where you have to be proficient in both, and completely related. But yeah, in a sense, it's nice. Like that male-female question. In a sense, it's nicer. But that I've found those people for. That's when I say it's, it's deceptively simple. We'll, we'll get some problems and you'll see what I'm talking about. What about died of something other than cancer? Does that mean, is there any reference for sex? No. So what do you know about died of something other than cancer? Number four over where? Can I erase this? I don't know what can I, ah, I hate this. All right, let's do it over here. Number four, OK? Died of something other than cancer. First of all, you know there's 190 people represented in that table. Is that true? That's the total in your sample. So died of something other than cancer. We know 40, uh, no, sorry, 77 people died of cancer. How many people died of something other than that cancer, that infl infliction? How many? 83 plus? 30. If you die of heart disease, is that something other than cancer? So it's 83 plus 30, which is that? 113. Watch out for that. Watch out for that, OK? Some people might have been tricked and go, oh, there's the other. <laughs> you got all of it. Sorry. You got to read the fine print. Something other.